So let's talk about the attack matrix. And by the way, they brought out a new version yesterday and changed everything. So my stuff is about the version before that, <laughs> the version seven. So here, when I first saw this, I was just disgusted. I said, what is all this stuff? It's too confusing. Um, but I got used to it. So let me go to flat layout, which is the way I'm used to seeing it. There we are. So what you have here, the point of this is, this is an attempt to make security organized instead of, and so there are in various attempts to get there. And if I go to tactics first, the point is to have tactics and techniques. And these are based on real advanced resistant threat attacks, like the Chinese and Iranian military and all the other criminal groups out there that attack people. And so if you go to tactics, this is where you start. What they've done, there was originally the Lockheed Martin kill chain, which is what you find in like the certified ethical hacker, where there's like six or seven stages of an attack. And this is the next step to uh, what advanced resistant threat people do. And this is just a way to organize it. So you have initial access. They find the ability to get some kind of control of some part of your network. Then they gain the ability to execute code. So they can execute a command. Now they want to have persistence so that even when you reboot machines, they retain control. Then they want to escalate privileges where they move from a local machine to administrator to domain administrator. Then they have often ways to avoid your antivirus and other defenses. Then they try to steal account names and passwords from, this, from the machine they're on. And then they try to scan your local network to discover what other resources you have that might be worth exploiting and then perform lateral movement to take over a series of machines on your network to penetrate deeper and deeper and find the goodies. And then, because as we talked about in the Splunk uh, part, you don't allow your critical machines to open browsers and go directly to the internet. They're only allowed to come out through the right path. So if they do get into your network and find goodies and steal them, it's not easy to exfiltrate the stuff. In fact, that's how this whole thing started. In 2010, China hacked Google, and the reason they got caught is because Google saw the data going out. They did not see them coming in or taking over the network, but they saw their data leaving, going off to China. And they said, why is our data going to China? And that's what led them to detect the attack. So this um, exfiltration is really quite a chore. So you collect data and uh, you, you exfiltrate it out of the network somehow. You have some kind of command and control server controlling your bots. And you may have other impacts like wiping out machines or physically breaking infrastructure. Now, not every attack does all these things. But the idea is that they have uh, defined these tactics and you can now organize your defenses and see how you can handle these tactics. So this is just an attempt to try to organize and um, make security into a science. One thing that I often have uh, to tell my students is unfortunately what we're doing is more of an art than a science. Uh, it would be nice to say your security is right now a six, but if you implement this firewall, it will become a seven and that will save you $1 million a year. We don't have any of that information. We can't quantify security. We can't say how much money it's gonna save. It's really, we can't really prove the value of what we do. And, but to get there, we need organization. And this is the first step in any science is to just sort things into categories. Um, so these are the categories of bad things that attackers might do as a goal. And then you can use the techniques they use to get there. And there's a lot of techniques. So if we go to the enterprise, uh, this is a list of them that way. I want the matrix. There we are. So that's what this thing is which like I say, I first was just horrified when I saw this because it's hundreds of terms. And I said, how could anybody understand this? And I ignored it. But then my students got jobs and they, the students that got jobs in compliance said, you know, those complicated compliance frameworks with diagrams like this, we're really using that. You really need to cover it more. So I took another look at it and I realized this is actually pretty valuable because anybody in the security field should know what all this stuff is. These should not be alien words to you. So it's worth getting some practice just understanding these things. So here's the techniques used for initial access, like phishing, for example. And there's some techniques here. I'd like to show them and then have the flat layout. All right. The one I'm used to. So you have different kinds of phishing. You have supply chain compromise where you compromise, you know, GitHub repositories and Python libraries and other ones to get the malware on there. You somehow, that's how you get initial access. Then you have ways to get 
execution with Python or using APIs and so on. And then your cron jobs, ways to persist, and ways to escalate. And there's just a whole series of techniques. So this is the um, just the taxonomy of all the types of attacks. And then you can look at the groups. So if you go here, for example, we've just been reading about Iranian groups. Iran supposedly Iranian groups sent email to um, us to attack us. So if I go to Iran, see how we've got control F there, Iran. All right, here's some Iranian groups, Elfin, and there's 18 known Iranian groups, APT39, Charming Kitten. I think this is one that, uh, in fact, I was able to do this, I wonder if I can reproduce it on the fly. I did it in a talk earlier this week. If you go to groups, yep, here they are, and then uh, look for Iran here. All right. Then I was able to find, I think Charming Kitten is the one that was attributed to do this attack on us. And it's an espionage group. And uh, this may not be the one. There was another. Anyway, the point is you see the groups and you see their most famous attacks. You see what their techniques are. And this is a big part of attribution these days. So uh, until a few years ago, I would tell students the standard wisdom was who cares who attacked you? All you want to do in instant response is find out how you got hacked and then figure out how to prevent it with patches or firewall updates or something. And figuring out who attacked you is not really important to you, but people are changing their mind about that. And this book just came out very recently, Attribution of Advanced Resistant Threats. It is now, they're saying you should figure out who attacked you and use that to guide your defenses. So you know, especially if you're an important big company like Critical National Infrastructure and you're getting attacked by advanced attackers, you probably should do some uh, threat analysis and figure out why people are attacking you and what kind of attacks they're going to use. So you do want to do attribution, and this is a large part of how you do it. You find out what they've used in the past and recognize them, and that is how they identified that Iranian group that attacked us. They, um, they had a video on the screen that had an IP address. I mentioned it earlier, and that IP address went to a known IP address used by one of these attack groups. So they were able to tell who did it. They were even able to find the individuals and, uh, you know, issue a, a warrant for their arrest or sanctions or something like that. So anyway, this is how you, uh, when I read the news, you can come here and you can see the technical background for what you're seeing in the news. And they say, you know, this Russia attacked us, Iran attacked us or somebody. Uh, you can get all the details here and you can even compare groups. And there's a, uh, a project that's a lot of fun down here in the, um, uh, the Navigator. This is a lot of fun. Oh, that's not the, there. There's the comparing layers in a navigator. This is what I wanted. This is the instructions. So let me see if I can do this live. The last time I tried to do this live, I fouled it up, but now I've got the instructions. So you go to the attack navigator. Uh-oh, they moved it. Now hopefully it still works. Create a new layer. Enterprise. Okay. All right. So this is the whole attack matrix. And the point of this is now you can compare groups. So let me take my instructions and move them to another machine, another window. Okay. And uh, they give you about 20 buttons up here, but I only use two of them. And uh, that is this one, the plus. Okay. So here I have all the techniques. So now I add a group here. Plus, now I choose someone. So I might choose a threat group, for example. So let's take APT19, for example. And if I select them, ah, now it highlights these by just putting um, squares around them. These are the techniques used by that group. So I select it. And now I go to the third from here, this one, and I give it a score. So I'm going to give that a score of one there. And now it colors them. So those are the techniques used by that group. And that group was APT19, I think. So I'm going to lab label this APT19. It's just like a spreadsheet. So there's APT19. And now if I add another sheet, I can create a new layer of enterprise. And I can do the same thing for a different group. So I can say APT12. Select that. It highlights some stuff. And now I give it a value of 2. 
So it colors them. It looks like only one of them. That's kind of boring. But I, anyway, I'll, leave, I'll go with it for the moment. So this is now, um, and that was APT12, I think. Let's put that here. Okay. All right. And now I can compare the two groups this way. I make a new sheet, creating a layer from other layers. And now I use Enterprise. <coughs> okay. And now I can put in an expression, which is, uh, uh, they have changed it, haven't they? How about A, APT19? All right, looks like they have changed this and broken it. Perhaps I have to use caps. Won't take caps. All right. And I can see they have fouled this up. Um, score expression. It used to be I could just, it would highlight these, I could just do A plus B or something. And now they have made it baffling and confusing. Okay. Anyway, so this won't be possible until I decipher whatever they've done. And I see that their instructions are still for the old version. So that's the kind of thing you get. <laughs> um, all right. Yep. Anyway, um, if it was there, you could make a combined layer and it would then have colors showing both groups and where they match, but they have changed this and made it complicated. That's one problem with it. They keep updating it all the bloody time. But anyway, um, you can download it. Anyway, so I'll have to up update those projects. It's good for me to find out because my students are going to have to do it in a couple of weeks. But anyway, this is a, that's what you get for teaching exciting stuff. It keeps changing on you. So anyway, that's good, clean, fun. And I guess while I'm here, I'll mention this Caldera, which is fun. Caldera is, one of the, is an open source tool to simulate these advanced resistant threats. So you just um, get a Linux server and install this stuff on it. And then you have a public address. And then you have this Caldera tool running. And so you can have agents that you put on machines so it can remotely control the machines. And the agent is just a block of PowerShell <laughs> or Linux. So this is a Linux version. It's just a code to execute on it. And that puts this server under the control of the central repository. And then you can make a Windows agent, which is just a block of PowerShell, which you execute on a Windows machine. Of course, these should all be, you know, not important machines that you need, just test machines. And now you have agents under control of your central server, and now you can um, send a simulated attack. And that's what the last part here is. So here you can, after you've got agents out there, you can put something on here. So browse to some sites, put on antivirus, uh, make a text file with top secret information in it, and then you're going to see if you can steal that. So you choose a campaign like spy and it will now try to do these things, screen capture, copy clipboard, get bookmarks and all these things to discover antivirus, stage files, exfiltrate them. It will try to do all these things and then you can see if your defenses stop them. So it's gonna play this like a movie doing all those things and then it's gonna give you a report here showing you what happened. It was not able to find the Wi-Fi because my target didn't have Wi-Fi so it couldn't sniff network traffic, but it was able to find the antivirus. It was able to do a screen capture, copy the clipboard. So certain parts of it worked and certain parts of it failed. And you can find the screenshot is up on your machine now. So you can see the screenshot with whatever's open right now. And you can see what was in the clipboard. So, you know, it doesn't, it's not Metasploit. It doesn't really attack the server. It does this simple little test activities to see if your defenses are working. And this is why if you buy commercial products at enterprise level, they're all in this attack framework now. This is helping them organize defense products and they all have, so you have standard ways of testing it. And so it's, it's really important for everybody in the business to get used to this thing. It is um, in its infancy and changing really fast, but this is the way we're gonna organize our thinking as we move forward until something better comes along. And so, uh, that's why I wanted everybody to get some practice with it. So I'll save this.